data that you don't necessarily know, then you're fine. If you're if you're super confident on something and all the stars are aligning, yeah, I think you should log into so it. So if you think the price is going to fall, then obviously that the volatility will go up. Um, Not necessarily. Yeah. You could move up and be more volatile at the time when it's moving up. Oh, yeah. Especially with Bitcoin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess the question to ask is, if you were trading just the underlying, which has a multiplier of one, what's the difference between trading that for a hundred times bigger versus trading the leverage product with a multiplier of a hundred? Yeah. It's, it's not much, it's just how you manage your margin and account. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of stop loss as well. Stop loss? Yeah. Yeah. All within the risk. Yeah. Risk yeah, we typically don't use stop losses um, because we, we just... Derivatives, we just come from a different path. So I know anyone who's done sort of technical trading, stop losses are their thing, but we basically just, we have some view on what this thing is worth in some short period of time, and we effectively just move in and out of the, in and out of the long or short positions. Is so, that because you're running a portfolio of instruments or single? Uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It could still be for a sing single instrument. At, at any given point in time, I will know, we, you should know what this thing is worth based on some sort of model. So if it's, if and as it gets back towards what your fair value is, you should effectively be like um, getting out of your position. So we, we typically do a, um, here's my fee over this thing at 10. I'm happy to sell here at 11. I'm happy to sell here more at 12. I'm happy to buy some down here at nine and buy more down here at eight. And as we move wherever, I will, if this, yeah, basically, if this moves up through here, I'm happy to sell, I'm happy to uh, buy this because, or sell it. Sorry. In the absence of any other information. Yeah, in the absence of any other, and then as that. we track back down, I should be basically moving out of this position. Because it's moving back to where my fair value is. So you're saying if your fear is moving out, yeah, sorry, 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 your things are really yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry, if, if the market is here and here, and my fear is moving up through this, I should be buying. And as we move back down, I should be selling out of that position because it's about, I'm effectively well, based on my model, which could be. I'm saying that, yeah, my fair value for this is basically the same as the market, so why, I shouldn't have any position. It's basically how, how we see things, which is a little bit different to anyone who has like a technical trading background who have some sort of, we're looking for this price target and we're stop loss here. So it's similar, just the way that we actually execute in and out our positions is a little bit different. Um, but the nice thing about this is it generalizes to anything because whatever, this, whatever my model is here, it's irrelevant. I just have a model that spits out a theo, and I have a market bid and ask, and if my Theo is across with my market bid and ask, I trade, and if it's not, my position is flat. So, so your Theo would have a time boundary on it, right? No, like it's, it's constant, constant through time, all like it's changing, but... Constant through time. Yeah, it's continuous. We, we have yeah, a function that can spit out a Theo at any given time for any given set of, of data. Yeah. So, so you always have a new Theo. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just a different mindset to how yeah. someone from a technical background thinks. Um, more questions? Cool. I'm, I'll try and buy this up. Um, uh, I couldn't get this working. Yeah, so I didn't have time to finish off writing my Docker files. Um, so we're going to run locally. Which is always fun. Um, any other questions? Like shout them out. Uh, I will put all this code up um, on the on my GitHub, which is limx0, um, to be forked and, and done whatever you want. It, it runs. So if you um, if you hook this up to a if you get a BTC Markets account, um, you set some environment variables with your API key and secret key, and you run these three files, you will be algo trading. Oh yeah. Um is there order rate, order update rate limits on that? There is, yeah. So they have a um, completely undocumented um, one second for market data, two seconds for trade, some time that I can't figure out for order updates. But it's basically about one once per second. Um, so you, but the market, the market doesn't move that quickly. So um, Are you guys scraping data over time, like just building it. Yeah, so we so the other benefit to se um, separating your algo trader from your market source is we can just run this 24-7. Yeah, yeah, so we just connect to it whenever we want to trade, and then we just, if we're... Do we have a back testing that, like, building the... Yeah, yeah th that should be the first thing that you write. Literally the first thing you should write. It should be your market source. Get it recording raw data as possible. Decide on your databases, how you're going to parse the data, how you're going to whatever, later. Yeah. First thing, hook up to the exchange, start collecting raw data. Um,
We have your wheel driver. There's not much of it. Do you do any um, optimization in your backtest? <coughs> yep, that's what they're for. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah twofold optimizing our model or optim or fix checking our code works basically. Yeah. So um, yeah, fantastic for both. Basically, want to make sure you set up your backtest so you put your whole code base inside it. Just do it because then you can exactly replicate what what it is you want to do. Uh, you won't get any uh, weird bugs. Yeah. When you turn on. Um. It's possible to ask how many. Approximately how many parameters like are in some of your models? Like I'm guessing not fifty, but uh, yeah, not not many. Could like between five and ten. It depends what it is, um, and it also we run multiple strategies. So um, uh, yes, excellent. Most of the stuff that we do is um, it's not like complex machine learning, <coughs> big data analysis with big feature sets and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's mostly simple. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll post up a link for how to run this if you want to run it. Just think um, about market microstructure. Yeah, uh, like why people are doing the things that they're doing in to that, but also having an underlying uh, theoretical thing like that so you can sanity check. Yeah, what sanity. percentages? I try to understand, you would always kind of have a position, right? Uh, I mean, somewhat. I would say most of the time, yes. Yeah. Yep, 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 so yep. it's just like yep. continuous. Yep, yep, yep. It's um yeah it's just a different yeah it's uh it's a different way to look at the world but it's quite good uh, but it's hard if you're doing if you're doing strictly technical analysis it's hard to do yeah, I'm not a technician yeah so but if you have any sort of other way of developing your field it's it's quite easy to do um, and the the volatility thing if you if you run your if you build your model in this way or your algorithm training in this way, it's quite easy to deal with volatility as well because if things start moving, you just widen up. You just ask, you effectively just ask for more credit to trade into some sort of position. And if the stars are aligning, you tighten right up because you're confident. And the, that, that width of your how you place your orders or how you get in and out of your trades, um, yeah, kind of all of it sort of just is in one place. Um, so I'm, I can't get this working, but I'll, uh, I'll put it up on the GitHub with some instructions on how to run it. Um, and yeah, any other questions? How about running an ensemble approach of same algo, same underlying, different set of parameters? Um, different parameters, but same same algo. Same algo, different different config. Uh, you self -trade if you do that. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it depends. There's a couple of there's, there's sort of two questions in one. Would I run an ensemble on, of different parameters of the same model? I don't think so because. One of them is going to one of the sets of parameters is going to be clearly better under some sort of sample period. So maybe it's throwing a, throwing random parameters in. I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't mean random, but if rather than optimize, yeah, have a set over a range that yep, all yep. have shown good performance in the past, but you don't know when they're going to. Perform oh yeah, yeah, yep, yep. So that would that would more be an ensemble of models than parameters, right? Or yeah, yeah, sure. Well, yep. the same the same exact algo with different. Yep, yep. So the, yeah, the, I suppose the problem with that is. Um, when you ensemble things, is you're going to trade less because they're going to have competing signals. Um, <coughs> so you no, might run, run separate instances, multiple instances. But then you're just going to trade with yourself, yeah. which is you're not not really give, you're not really there's no real information. You know that, that's in a market making sense, obviously, right? But, uh, no, even in a positional sense, if you're running um, different strategies and they have different parameters and they're trading against each other, that's effectively like a no information um, play. One of your things is saying sell, one of them is saying buy, and if you don't execute them internally, but you execute them in the market, you just pay two fees, which is not, yeah. not great. So, well, On a related note, are there any rules uh, about self-trading or watch trading in this exchange? <laughs> There's not many rules for anything, so <laughs> they're fairly unregulated. Um, jo I think Josh put an example of like the, this is a good one, this is a good market structure one. So Josh had an example where the book is like this, 11, 12, 13, Josh has got a trade in at 13, Someone puts a bid in at 14 and wants to buy at 14 and gets filled at 14. <laughs> now, anyone who's done this sort of work with the exchange says they should get filled at an average price of here and they got filled at an average price of here, which is not good <laughs> from, a, from a participant point of view. Fantastic from a market maker point of view. You had an offer here that carried risk with it, but you got this price for it. Fantastic, but yeah. So the, the exchanges are... There's some, yeah, there's some funny ones. You want to definitely want to understand the nuances of how your orders are going to get executed when you put them in. What's going on there? Does the book not work? 
as the normal pool? Uh, well, they're, they're just, their internal matching engine just, just operates differently. Well, it just doesn't have a cool yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a As a taker, you get you pay more fees and you get railed. So just, that, yeah, no, no comment on that. So. Um, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll put this up. So basically, all that's required to make this work is the BTC markets API key and secret. Set them as an environment variable, Docker compose up, and uh, you'll be able to run this on your local PC. Um, I'll put that up tomorrow. So it's, I'll send out a, a email tomorrow night with uh, instruct put it up on the GitHub with instructions on how to run it. Um, any more questions? Back to that async Yep. So, sorry. If you want to know more, come talk to me after. Unless everyone cares okay. about async IO, tiny language feature of Python 3.4. Basically, my question is about how how far back you, as well as how how much forward you went. Kind of stream processing. Uh, async IO literally just allows you to run um, just just like cooperative co-routine, so it's like, if I'm waiting on something here, I can go and do some work over here. Oh, so, okay, okay. basically, That's just like, if I've sent an order, I've sent, a, I've sent a HTTP request to BTC Markets, yep. and I know that I'm going to have to wait for that, I can just cooperatively pass control of the thread back to yep. someone else, so, yeah. Great. Um, and also, just a quick plug, if anyone is uh, has a quantitative background and uh, is interested in tennis modeling, um, please come talk to me. <laughs> or any other sort of other sports betting. <laughs> Please. Um, thank you very much. I won't have any more time. Thanks for coming.